Well, we bought this bike about three years ago. This is the wife's bike. Been working perfectly until last month. We were in the desert. Uh, firstly, it just ran away. Revved at like 10 billion RPMs, despite the fuel being shut off and pulling the plug wire. Then uh, got it running again for 15 minutes, perfect, and then just dead. Nothing. And so uh, I removed the stator, which is this guy, sits behind the flywheel. And um, did some tests. Came to find out that my coil... There was no continuity between these terminals so the thick wires that you can see sticking up here mine is red this is a 95 uh, so one is red one is black and red and they solder onto these terminals that have these notches see they're on the left on the tip so one of the wires gets pushed in here and soldered and then the thin wire that gets wrapped goes on this terminal Anyways, I decided I would just um, let's get some lights on here. I would just try and rewind this just for fun. Now I do have a lathe, that really helps. Um, and so Murphy's Law um, rewound the first one. Had no clue when to stop, and um, I was perfectly in the middle of the spec. I don't know how that happened. Uh, it was 475 ohms resistance. Of course, put it in, and by the way, I rebuilt the motor. Uh, it's got new bearings and piston and crank and the whole the whole nine yards, except for Nickasil. The Nickasil plating still good. Anyways, uh, put the one I did in, ran for five seconds on the second kick, which means that whatever I did produced spark, and then died. Come to find out that um, my soldering joints had little flat spots and these studs in my flywheel had nicked the coil and burnt it basically just shorted it out so my brand new coil that was perfectly in spec ran for five seconds murphy's law as i just mentioned i rewound it and then it broke at three quarters and it's always fun removing that much wire. This was last night. So I finally managed to get my third one rewound. This one's about yeah, 10 ohms short of the minimum. I think the minimum's like 385 and this is like 380. So it's fine. And it's pretty cold out. So it might go up, but it's it's good. The ohms are just like general. You just got to be very close or within the spec. You don't have to be on the number. Um. So this one's now producing 380 or something ohms. And so I'm just going to show you what I used. I'm not going to actually demonstrate. Um, if you do have access to a lathe, I'll give you a tip that I did. So I have a four jaw chuck and that allowed me to pinch um, this on two of these sides and center it. I just used a little square and that seemed to work very well. The wire I bought um, for my KX250 was 36 gauge. I measured the thickness of what came off and it was pretty much identical to this. You could probably go up or down a size. This is a four ounce spool. Uh, and what's nice about it is that, um, so if you know much about layers, this is an old South Bend 9. Um, and there's a pin over here. Now, I pulled this pin up because the pin locks the head straight to the drive gears. So when you turn it on, it just has this very potent kick where it like jumps. And I figured that that would just snap these little wires. So what I did was I pulled this pin out. And what that does is, let me just do that quick. Let me just show you what I mean here. It requires a flat screwdriver just to kind of get this pin out. Okay, with this pin out, normally you'd go to your back gears for thread cutting. But what it allows is, you see, you see the head is now not completely connected to this. And if you time it right, you get like a soft start. See there? 
it kind of sometimes it doesn't work but what that allows is a very slow start and i used that when i started to wind the wires and all i did was i pinched the little coil in my four jaw chuck and i stood here and i just fed it and fed it and fed it now um, before i took the coil apart that came out very well i measured the diameter um, along here look it's never going to be straight and this winding was even worse but my first one was pretty flat and anything i got an average of about 0.9 inches to 0.93 all along here and that gave me excellent ohms results i also measured the weight and it turned out to be about a hundred is it ounces no wait this is four ounces and let me see here. I don't understand all this American stuff, but I had a new one. I removed all the wrapping and weighed just the spool. I had two identical ones. So I kind of compared what was left over on the first one with the new one. And the first, the new one was 435. I had the same amount. And the spool that gave me my first wrapping, I was at 330. 3.3 .3. okay so i was exactly one ounce of copper almost exactly i mean i don't know how accurate this is but exactly one ounce of this stuff gave me perfect results for the kx250 so there's there's a reference point you can either use calipers and just keep going with this until you get 0.9 inches along the top or weigh it as I said, one ounce, which means that a four ounce spool like this would do four of these. I wasted one, I lost one, and I've done my third. So I probably have maybe, maybe not enough on this. Now, the other thing to consider is, is if you get a big spool of this and you're using the lathe, if you're doing it at the speed I was doing it, which was the normal lathe speed, which really, really speeds us up. I mean, it takes me maybe eight minutes to wind one of these. Um, it, it, it's pretty fast. So I don't know if a bigger spool than four ounce would be smart because it would be too much weight on the spool as it's spinning. And the problem you have is that this is not, it's flat and narrow, wide and sort of narrow. So it keeps jumping like this. So I use like my fingers here to kind of do that. And my other hand I have here and I just hold the spool on a little stick. It's a little redneck. And like I said, I screwed up. It caught the edge and blah, blah, blah. So um, another thing to do is when you have this bear, um, and I'll show you some pictures if I can find them, um, double this wire up about that long and twist it uh, and just do the first two wraps with that and solder that double wrap to this terminal it just gives you a little more beef for that initial soldering and the wrap because this wire has to run from this terminal you know down onto the body of this and then once i'm done i do the same my last wrap i double the wire wrap i twirl it together and wrap it around and then I strip the insulation off and then I solder it on over here just so that you know both of these wires from the ends are at least doubled up um yeah so that's it um anyways I don't know what happened I think that's what took this bike out in the beginning you can see I've actually after soldering put the the soldering tips on the bench grinder briefly just to like flatten them down as you can see because um, it's even below the factory pins and I'm going to do the same once I mount this in the stator over here and I solder these wires on uh, I'm just going to make sure that they are you know like this one on the left here I've filed down I'm going to make sure because um, yeah other thing I did was I put this in the lathe and turned the backs of these studs down 30 thousandths which equates to about 0.7 millimeters i think that's what originally took this uh, bike out because when we were in the desert i kicked it and it just didn't sound like there was any spark um so you know it's interesting while i was turning this all the shavings were piling up on the bit holder and they were rubbing along the inside here and they ended up polishing that it looks really cool 
I never touched this with the, the, the lathe, but all the chips were like kind of piling up on the tool holder and uh, it actually came out looking pretty sweet. And of course I had to pick all the metallic bits out of this because it's magnetic. But anyways, there you are, some wacky stuff. Um, I think what I could possibly do is A, not drop this while I'm filming. Um, but you know, it would be interesting to put like some clay on top of that and then just lightly tighten that down and pull it off and just see that I have at least, I'd say, three quarters of a millimeter clearance between the tops of these solders and these. Because, yeah, it sucks having it kiss that short out and you have to really go through all of this. Um, I'm not sure what changed in the bike. I have no idea. Don't know what happened. Um, but hopefully... This will get the bike running because I am very keen to have it run longer than 10 seconds this time. Um, so, if she runs, we'll film it. We'll film it when, uh, when I get everything together and see, uh, see if she stays running this time. Because I have to do the break-in, which I think is 10 minutes warm-up, cool down. You kind of just let it idle to temps and do a couple like that before you actually ride it on a new ring and piston so thanks for watching guys and i hope this helps